know that until you have an experience of it. That's how the Bible is. It is written with a code. Only those that have the experiential dimensions can actually tell how it works practically. For the rest of the people, it's just going to be a rhyme, a poem. But when you begin to have spiritual experiences, you will now know the protocol, you will now understand what the entire system is all about. So this Apostle Paul is praying that God should make available to the church in Ephesus the spirit of wisdom and revelation that furnishes the knowledge that is in Christ Jesus. And it will interest you to know that the knowledge that is in Christ Jesus, that is the knowledge that Apostle Paul called the excellent knowledge. That the, the knowledge that is in Christ Jesus is an excellent knowledge. It is superior to engineering, the knowledge of engineering. It is superior to the knowledge of physics. It is superior to the knowledge of chemistry. As powerful as the knowledge of chemistry is. Because that's what I read. It's powerful. Especially when you see organic chemistry. Oh my God, it's very powerful. But you see, Apostle Paul calls the knowledge that is sourced from Christ an excellent knowledge. A knowledge that supersedes in depth, supersedes in illumination, supersedes in empowerment. Much more than any other knowledge that you can find that is routed to the soil of the human soul. This knowledge that is in Christ Jesus, unfortunately for us, is not the kind of knowledge that you can learn. Unfortunately for us, it's not even the kind of knowledge that you can be taught. Anytime this knowledge comes, it comes from the source. It is always handed out. It comes through the outlet of what we call the knowing of revelation. I was just with a brother today. I know he's somewhere in the congregation here. He took us around Manchester. I didn't know Manchester was this big and saw high rise buildings. The first time I came, I thought Manchester was a village because where we went to. <laughs> Hallelujah. In fact, the name of the hotel that we stayed was called Village Hotel. So, <laughs> so I, I concluded that it was a village. So, but we went out today and I saw skyscrapers. Oh my God, what's going on here? Amen. My eyes were almost always up there, up there, up there. Jesus. So he was telling me the story of how he came to Manchester. That he had a job in London. His wife had a job in London. And in the place of prayer, the Lord said, Hey, the resources that are made available for your life is in Manchester. That's how he resigned his job. His wife resigned her job. And they came over to Manchester, not knowing anybody. But many years down the road, it is clear now that God led them. That's what we call the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. You are armed with this knowledge. Sometimes, in fact, it doesn't even make logical sense, this, this knowledge, this excellent knowledge. But you are foolish enough to apply it to your life, to walk by it. You will find results that you are not even capable of producing. And so, Apostle Paul is saying that each, if each and every one of us travels into that place where the economy of the knowledge of Christ is held up, and we begin to participate in, in, in the wisdom that comes through this knowledge, you will have experiences with God such that even if a fake preacher comes to preach to you, he cannot sway you because you already have an experience with God. So, Apostle Paul was saying that before the fix come, may the Lord grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you can be grounded in the knowledge of him. That will become your security against every storm and against every falsehood that will come. The man that has an experience is, 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 is stronger than the man that has an argument. So if God wants you to have an experience, what he does is that he makes available to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that entrenches the knowledge that is in Christ. And it will interest you to know that if you lack spiritual knowledge, 
you cannot be effective in spiritual warfare. When we come to teach about spiritual warfare, then we'll need to do a course, a refresher course on spiritual knowledge. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye see thee. See, there is a difference between information and experience. And Paul is saying that I want all of you to travel into the realm of experience and have your own encounters with God and prove God that God is dependable, God is reliable. We can, we can lean on him. Prove it. Once you have done that, falsehood will not drive around your, your life. If every one of us, if there's so much truth available in the body of Christ, you will find that falsehood will die a natural death. That's why we are emphasizing prayer. Because it's the entry point into experience. The dimensions of God can be explored just like astronauts explore space. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. So in this scripture, you will find Apostle Paul mentioning three basic things that there is no other way you can know about them or know them except the eyes of your understanding. Is enlightened. Number one. Are you following the, the discussion? Now, what I'm doing here is not the message. What I'm doing here is I'm educating you to bring you to a point where you can receive the message. The message is advanced. Is so. So we are doing an abridged program to link, to connect you to the level where you can reason at that level. The moment we, we, we release the message, then we'll do practicals. The practicals will now be, first of all, a deliverance service for 15 minutes. And then a healing service for 15 minutes. Then the next five minutes that will be left is for the rain. It's an act of me rain in the time of the later rain. And I will make bright clouds. It's my responsibility. You don't know how to make clouds. I, that's what I do. I enjoy making bright clouds. And I'll pour down rain onto everyone grass of the field. So we'll ask him for rain. And then the rain of heaven. The same way you'll be excited when you, you if I take my, this my glass of water and I pour it out. <laughs> There's a way you will behave. That is the same way you'll behave if that rain comes. Down. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I, I feel that the Lord is, is releasing something into your life. Yeah? And uh, yes, you. And when, we begin, when, when the rain comes, I will, I, will, I will know what it is. Okay? I will know what it is. In verse number 18 of Ephesians chapter 1, Apostle Paul says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. Not your calling, but his calling. There is a hope, there is an expectation, there is something he wants to achieve for which he called you. Are you there? And if the eyes of your understanding is not enlightened, there is no way you can stumble on the knowledge of what he had in mind for which he called you. The hope of his calling talks about his eternal purpose, something beyond time that was formed and sustained in his heart as a desire, and he was restless. He wanted to accomplish that which was forged on his heart. It was a product of his counsel that was taken in himself all right? That, it was that counsel that he took in himself which is sustained upon his heart that is the reason for which he called you. And there is no way you will know why he called you or what he called you for or what he wants to achieve except the eyes of your understanding is enlightened. It means that you will never know the reason for your existence if you don't receive spiritual knowledge. In the book of Colossians, the Bible says that all things were made 
all, in him, all things were made by him, and, and in him does everything consist. That means the meaning of you can only be sourced in him. And if the eyes, it doesn't matter. You, maybe you made the first class and you got honors and, you know, your name, you were on BBC. Waving a hand of excellence. <laughs> if the eyes of your understanding is not enlightened, that, that, that recognition will become a blindfold that will even complicate your life even more. Because you will feel a sense of importance because you were recognized. But you don't know that in that state of false success, you are even more, you, you will, might even lack the humidity that is needed for you to source your essence, your meaning from him who is the Christ. He uh, said, by him all things consist. So if I'm going to find out what I'm ordained to be, ordained to do, what I should be spending money on, I will need to find out from him. It will take spiritual knowledge for me to enter into the economy of that reality. So without spiritual knowledge, there is no way you can understand the hope he had in mind before he called you. And I assure you, if you find out from him what he called you to do, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you don't look like it. In fact, the day he tells you, you will quit because you know you don't even have the ability to prosecute it. You will still need to depend on him to supply the grace. If you don't need grace to do it, it's not, it's not true. You, you have not found it. You have not found it. You have not found it. It's not intellectual. The Bible says we are able ministers of the new covenant. We have become able. Not according to the letter, but according to the spirit. There is a spirit supply that is responsible for our equipping, for our ability. All right? If you don't have that spirit supply, uh, you will see yourself in the light of insufficiency, which is a proof that, yes, that calling is valid. If you stumble on your calling and you feel you have what it takes to prosecute it, sit down. It's not your calling. It's not your calling. It's, it's a hobby. <laughs> I was born a, a stammerer. And when I checked, I found out that I was called to preach the gospel, to be a teacher of nations. How do you do that? Stammering. And meanwhile, I asked the angel that told, read it out of a scroll to me. I asked him, okay, hey, 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 stop that. Stop that. How does a stammerer preach the gospel? That was a crime I would never commit again. Because I didn't know that some angels were so difficult to appease. He stopped reading. Then he shouted. You know how the shout sounded? Thunder. Yes. Thunder. What we call thunder was the shout of that angel. I assure you there are powers beyond imagining. In the realm. And Jesus will, through his spirit, will be introducing you gradually. Because if he exposes you to some things, you will, you will go down with Parkinson's. <laughs> <laughs> gradual, gradual introduction. Gradual, 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 gradual. So that you can, you can stand. There are, there are dimensions of the presence of Christ that you cannot walk in. It, it will look as if you are dying. You are being sucked into eternity. And I've seen those things in dreams. That's what God wants to do in these last days. It will be so, so, oh my God, okay. Yeah, um, amen. amen. So the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That's number one. Number two. And the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. How I wish I had time to take you to the book of, to read some verses before this verse. Where the apostle begins with a salutation. Blessed be, verse 3. Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. Those are riches, but the riches are domiciled in the spirit. You see, you would not have access to, okay, that's like, uh, somebody help me. In Nigeria, we call it Central Bank of Nigeria. What do you call it here? Bank of England? Bank of England. There is a budget that has been set up to sponsor your destiny. Yes. And that is what the Bible is talking about in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. And it will interest you to know that the currency is stronger than the British pound. Blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms in Christ. That is the basis of our funding. But if the eyes of your understanding is not enlightened for you to see what I'm talking about, because if it doesn't come to you as a revelation, it's not yet strong enough. Then you will rest in hope. And then you begin to see the resources. It was when I was shown that resource base, domiciled in Christ Jesus in the heavenly realms, that I realized that God allowed me to be born a stammerer because there were resources in the spirit that was sufficient to swallow up every symptom of some stammering that was in my life. So he allowed me to be born a stammerer. Are you there? Because there is funding that can cancel out stammering. What's your greatest problem? Sister, what's your greatest? What's the, tell me what, you need one million pounds? You, okay, you don't even need, you don't need that. That's not what you need. What? Oh my God. That thing you call your greatest challenge, your greatest impediment, your greatest limitation. Let me tell you a way out. God is not going to meet your need because you are crying. No. He will begin to meet your need because you are aligned to his kingdom. Yes, you are, you are striving to achieve his dream. Then the things that the Gentiles seek will begin to navigate in your direction. So you, you are not doing anything for the Lord. You are not bothered about the, the God's kingdom. You are just bothered about yourself and how to feed yourself and your wife and your small daughter. Then uh, you will, you might, it might take a long time to survive, to surmount that lack. But the moment you align yourself to his kingdom, align yourself to begin to fulfill what he has in mind for you. Many of you are intercessors and you're not praying. And any time you get to pray, you pray about money, that breakthrough. Jesus. Now, you will pray for long until you come to a point where you grow beyond seeing self and you begin to see that God's dream is bigger than you and your challenges and your pocket. And you make yourself available to be attending to the emphasis of God for your life. Then he will say, okay, yeah, he, he needs funding so that he can be more effective. He needs funding. He needs funding. He begins to make what you need to prosecute that mission to navigate in your direction. As long as I teach this scripture, I will have what it takes to move to the next city. I have proved it for years. Do you understand? Yes. We believe in integrity. Hmm? We are not doing ministry for money. Even though we know money is important. Because we have faith in our God. That our God does not start a project that is not willing to fund. Yes. I have seen people come under intense pressure to release money. And you could see that they were shaking. Oh. So the Holy Spirit can go this far. Shaking. Sometimes he can even, he can molest an unbeliever. Say, hey, stand up. My servant needs to move. He needs to move. He needs to move. And, and the person can walk up to you and say, do you realize I hate you? I actually, I actually hate you. And you don't dress nice, but I don't know. A voice has been speaking. Ah. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> a 
except the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, you will not know what is the riches of his glory in the inheritance among the saints. Please help me tell your neighbor, you are adequately funded. And the third thing that you can never know except the eyes of your understanding is enlightened is oh my god this is the this this scripture is the most difficult scripture in the entire bible Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 I know you don't believe me I, I speak as a scholar a bible scholar he said the eyes of your understanding needs to be enlightened so that you can know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. You know why this is complex? You are not with me. You know why that scripture is complex? Good. Because all the major four words in the Greek that is used to connote power is in one verse. Dunamis is there. Kratos is there. Iskus is there. Exousia is there. And the verbs, and there are also some verbs like megatos. It, that's the, that, we call that verse the verse of power. 